Hello, and thank you for choosing DynasOne Systems. The following video is designed to help you identify each component of the DynasOne, demonstrate the fitting process, and provide a general review of the treatment protocol. Please remember that just as each animal is unique, so is each treatment. This video is only a guide and should not replace the assistance of your DynasOne consultant. Thank you for choosing DynasOne Systems, where we hope to stretch beyond your expectations. The equine over at the knee dyna splint is used to correct contractures of the equine carpus. This splint applies a low load, prolonged stretch, gently pushing the knee backward, in turn stretching and supporting tissues to achieve correction. Your dyna splint system will arrive fully padded and labeled ready to apply to the animal. In your box you will find photographs, written fitting instructions, a treatment schedule that your dyna splint sales consultant has designed specifically for your animal, additional padding that will be necessary throughout the treatment process, a screwdriver used to adjust the tension throughout the duration of the treatment. You will also find a FedEx prepaid label. Please save this label as well as a box as you will need them when you and your consultant have decided that your animal's treatment is complete. Before applying the Dyna Splint system, please speak with your sales consultant about adding a wrap underneath a splint. Wrapping is not always necessary, but since each horse is unique, wrapping can sometimes prevent further complications. Hold the DynaSplint system up to the horse's leg to check the length of the proximal and distal struts. The cam, wrapped with the padding, should line up with the middle of the knee. The distal struts should extend as far down the cannon bone without coming in direct contact with the fetlock. The distal strut can lie close as long as the padding and strut are not rubbing or causing irritation. The proximal struts will extend as far up the radius and should fall right below the large muscle on the forearm. To adjust the length of the struts, you will find set screws covered with electrical tape or a pull pin and lock adjustment on the proximal and distal struts. First remove and save the electrical tape. Loosen the set screw by turning to the left. Only a few turns is needed so it doesn't fall out. Slide the tubes within each other to the desired lengths and then tighten. Using the electrical tape, recover the screw. This will ensure the screws do not walk out. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. Some DynaSplint systems have a pull pin and lock adjustment. Simply pull and move the tubes to the desired position until they click in place. Your DynaSplint consultant has labeled the cuffs front top, front bottom, back top, back bottom. Please follow these labels when applying the DynaSplint to your animal. Begin by opening the back top cuff and the back bottom cuff, leaving all front cuffs and straps closed. Next, bring the splint around the front of the leg. Line the wing pads up with either side of the radius while also lining up the cam with the middle of the knee. Tighten the back top cuff first, feeding it through the D-wire and pulling it as tight as possible. Next, feed the front top cuff through the D-wire and tighten. This will ensure the splint is tight enough and will not slide as you go to tighten the bottom of the splint. Pull the distal struts back toward the cannon bone. You will be working against the tension on the splint and will feel the spring resisting as you pull. Once the distal struts and wing pads have been lined up with either side of the cannon bone, tighten the back bottom cuff by feeding it through the D-wire and pulling snug. Then pull the front bottom cuff through the D-wire and tighten. Next, go back over each cuff, pulling snug once more. This will ensure the splint is pulled as tight as possible. If you have been given two counterforce straps, they need to be pulled snug. One should fall above the joint, while the other should fall below the joint. These straps should not come in direct contact with the knee. If your splint contains a butterfly strap, this will need to be pulled as tight as possible over the knee. Simply open the tabs and pull tightly to make snug. Wrap the duct tape around the top and bottom cuffs to prevent the splint from slipping and discourage chewing. To remove the splint, cut the duct tape, making sure not to cut any straps or cuffs. Then undo the back top and back bottom cuffs. Once the splint has been removed, be sure to fasten all the Velcro straps in order to maintain proper orientation. Your DynaSplint consultant has preset the initial tension on your horse's splint. If and only if the individualized treatment schedule calls for increasing the tension, 
It is done in the following manner. Insert the silver screwdriver into the hollow end of the distal strut. To increase the tension, turn the screwdriver to the right. Remember, righty tighty. And to decrease the tension, turn the screwdriver to the left. Remember, lefty loosey. Because the DynaSplint system is a bilateral tensioning device, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. The window with the red or blue scales on the distal strut shows the tensioning setting. Be sure they match. The DynaSplint system should be worn two to three hours initially. Increase the wear time one to two hours a day until six to eight hours of wear is achieved. The horse must be stalled when wearing the DynaSplint system. Please follow the treatment schedule your DynaSplint consultant has included in the box. If your DynaSplint consultant has recommended adding a wrap under the splint, please do so before splinting. This wrap should be removed along with the splint on a daily basis. It is very important that you check the leg on a daily basis. This can be done by running your hand up and down the leg feeling for signs of irritation or swelling. Finally, if there are any signs of soreness or stiffness that persist longer than 20 minutes, please call your DynaSplint consultant.